So you know this guy? You've probably seen him in some videos. I'm just about to have a conversation with him. Okay, so this is an abbreviated version of an earlier video that we did a couple of months ago. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Bryant Bouchard. We met about, what, 11 years ago? Yeah, I'm going to say it was at least, I don't think we met before, but the uh, 11 years ago that you're talking about um, was at the uh, Ceramic Tile Education Foundation down in uh, Anderson, South Carolina. Yeah, at the um, John Bridge, um, mm -hmm. Schluter. I mean, that, you know, we call it an elite class, and <laughs> isn't that the name of your company, Elite Tile? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, what a, what, a, what a coincidence, right? Well, and, and that's, that's why we had to invite you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> you guys don't just teach about, about your product. You give right. like an overall um, background on tile and, and what it's all about. You know, when I started using the products, it's actually back in uh, 1991, and it started with floor profiles. Yeah. And, and they did have Dietra then, but I wasn't ready. That's the whole thing. Cause you know, you see a product and you, and you're like, does this stuff really work? You're not like, you're, you're not just some guy that started to work for Schluter. Mm -hmm. You were a tile professional and still were installing tile. Yeah. For many years before you, you work for Schluter like me. You know, I grew up in a construction family. My dad actually was a plaster. And you know, when I say that Sal, that, that's not drywall taping. I'm talking plaster on lath. Sometimes they would have horse hair. In the yeah, a lot of times, so, you know, you go, you go into the really old houses and you pull it down yeah. and you're trying to cut out a section Yeah, <laughs> and you end up taking out a bigger section. So dad was a plaster by trade and a lot of his work was in the city of Montreal. And during the 1950s, he had a couple uh well, he did a couple projects for people that weren't honest. Sometimes something that seems like a, like a catastrophe mm -hmm. actually is the door opening to something much better. Right. I wouldn't be here if there hadn't been a few shady people <laughs> that ripped off my dad, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and, and the builders loved his work ethic. And you know that, Sal, when builders know they can trust a tradesman. Well, you know. You got to clarify on that a, lot, a little bit because builders that like actually um, appreciate quality. Right. Once they find someone that does something the right way and, the, you know, they, they you know, they, they, they take pride in what they do, usually mm -hmm. they'll stick with them. Well, and that's, you know, we're talking, this is 1960 and it's still. Yeah, how old were you in 1960? Well, <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> born yet. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I'm a little bit older than you. Okay. Let's talk about that then. <laughs> Your family originated in Canada. I have actually yep. a little bit more of a diverse background because I, I wasn't even like, like I'm, a, I'm an immigrant mm -hmm. to this country. I came here in 1984. Before then, I was actually born and raised in Australia. And, yeah, then, from, yeah. and then from Australia, I went to, to Italy and I lived in Italy for about nine, eight years. And then I came here. I have a twin brother hmm. and he's still in, still in Rome. So you, no, no, you have, there's two of you. There's two. <laughs> there's two, there's two <laughs> you have a, well, you no, there's a, only one of me. Well, then there's, then, there's, then there's an inferior copy. He would yeah. say the other way. Right. <laughs> yeah. I came to this country in 84 and I, I didn't know a thing about time when I came here. I was about, about 27 years old. My background before that, before I, I was actually uh, an outboard mode mechanic, believe it or not. I'll, I'll remember that if I get a boat or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't remember that. <laughs> can, you, can you work on Vespas since they're Italian too? And um, No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got married in 85? 1985. So did I. Really? What, what month? Uh, whoops. I got to think about it. <laughs> Caught myself well, tell there. your wife not to watch this. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> so I started in the trade in, in 1984. That's mm -hmm. where I started in the, in the flooring industry. And I worked for a couple of companies. I got some experience. I got some, some you know, learned. The first company I, I worked for, I learned the completely wrong way. You know what, Sal? I can say, I can look back and know there were a few things yeah. we 
we could have done better. That, there's a lot of things that I did back then mm -hmm. that when I look back, is like, really? We went according to manufacturer's recommendations at that time. And, you know, uh, many times they learn that there's a better way, right? Well, of course. Well, that's why you have product um, development and, and, and uh, testing and, you know, you figure out, well, maybe we can do this to that or that to the product, or maybe we shouldn't use it quite this way. And I think not only were we learning, but so were the manufacturers. And so it was like a ride that we were doing together, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you know, I think the great company, Sal, were the ones who would listen to you and would listen to me, right? Because you can test a product, you can, you can figure out how it works, and then it goes out into the field. Yeah. Right. And then yep. you get the feedback from, you know, the installers or whatever. Say, well, why is this like this? Why can't it be like this? We would do a few little tile jobs. And I always thought they're kind of cool. They were little squares, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little squares, not like yeah. today. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, back then, and you, you'll remember this too. There was four and a quarter wall tile. Oh my God. There was, and there was the bigger ones, the six inch by six inch wall tile. So that was, wall yeah. tiles yeah and then and then the floors were mostly eight inch by eight inch tiles. eight inch by eight inch and then when the uh when the 12 inch by 12 inch was like wow these are so big <laughs> oh yeah yeah we couldn't believe it we're like wow this is just like marble <laughs> <laughs> and remember they tried to make it look like marble yeah oh yeah they did a really good job with that <laughs> oh remember the the first ones would have one print yeah, that's right. No, like you could see the pattern, like, and oh, then yeah. and then you had to decide: Are you gonna make them all go the same way? Are you gonna Are you gonna make them random? Are you gonna alternate I, them? <laughs> I did. I I would rotate them at least the best I could to make them look different. Yeah, and yeah. No know, matter what you, remember, you did, <laughs> do, you, do you remember you'd look for that one uh, aspect of the pattern that you'd see? Yeah, quickly. yeah. So it'd be in the corner or in. Yeah. It, yeah. Because if it was in the middle, you could you could switch it around. So you would look for that one yeah. thing that you could say, well, this goes top right hand corner, yeah. top right hand corner yeah. all the time. Remember plywood? You remember Luan? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I have a funny story on Luan because you know, you were talking about um, you know, you you know, you were saying, did you learn the right way? And I had my dad, which, you know, he was a very proud man. So we, you know, he tried to do everything. You know, the right way. So, you know, today, I mean, it's amazing that, and unless you live through it like we did, you may not appreciate everything that's available today because, you know, it's available on your phone, you know, um, any website, any video, you know, your videos, my videos, they're there, right? Yeah. And I think back when my dad and I, now, this is a funny story. Again, my dad was French Canadian. And he was one who did not like to read directions. <laughs> so guess who got the job of reading directions? You did. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I got good at it. Okay. Yeah. And um, I took it seriously. That was a blessing in disguise. It sure was. It really was. And it's probably one reason I have the job I have today. We didn't have videos back then, right? I mean, I think in the early 80s, VHS tapes might have been coming out or beta tapes or something like that. But there wasn't much in our industry, was no, there? No, no. Okay. It, yeah, so, information was hard to come by. Yeah. And, and so I always joke when I do uh, seminars um, now, I tell the attendees that the only instructions we had back then was on the back of the bag of ThinSet. Or yeah, the back of the and it's amazing how much information is actually on there. And I'll I'll say the M word this today, mastic. It would <laughs> <laughs> it would it would say where it was appropriate and where not to. Okay. So anyway, I can remember going as far back to the earliest days and remembering that Luan was not it, we were told that it wasn't acceptable. Said it right on the back. You and I both know that it was used oh for sure despite the fact that our our industry you know the chemist and the thin set manufacturer said don't a lot of times you know even though the information is there right mm -hmm. on the bag mm -hmm. most most times people don't read that it's thin set what they might read is well you need so much water and you got to mix it for so long 
right. and then they don't even do that they just add water <laughs> you know or let's mix it oh that looks good a guy i used to work for mm -hmm. at the very beginning you know what he loved to do What's jersey that? mud jobs mm -hmm. so for anyone that doesn't know what a jersey mud job is you get the y lad you staple it down right and then you skim it with with thin set or you 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 install your tile right over the wire lad, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is like at the very beginning when I was first starting and I'm like, and then we'd always have to go back like a month later or two weeks later and we'd have to change 10, 20 Ooh. tiles, right? Because they would crack. Mm. And I was like, there's something wrong with this. And I was like thirsty for like, you know, where do I get this information from? And you, as we said, right, it wasn't easy to come by. Mm -hmm. So then you discover, then, then, you know, then I went into, after I worked for that, I worked for another company and they were more, um, wanted to do things more the correct way. Mm -hmm. But even then, right, they didn't want to share that much information. So that's, that's when I discovered the, the at the time, PCA, Tile yeah. Council of America. Back then it was sure. a TCA. Right. And then I discovered uh, some magazines, right? Mm -hmm. So I would be like, I get those magazines. I look for the technical uh, information. I'd, I'd cut, I still have them. I'd cut out the, you know, they have, um, you know, some article on how to do this. And one of the ones I remember, actually, I might even still have it. It's about, specifically about law and plywood. So, you know, information was hard to get, get back then. And a lot of people didn't want to share it. And that's one of the reasons why I do the videos that I do is because, you know, it's better to, even if you're a DIYer and you're doing it, it's better to know the right way than try and guess at it. I didn't really want to stay in construction. Uh, I, I wanted to do something different. So I went to the four armed services. <laughs> I went and they were all in one building. And uh, the Navy just sounded like the best one. You know, I was going to go into nuclear power training and all that. Oh, really? And so that's, that's where I went. I joined the United States Navy. I, I did my four years and went back to work with my dad. But right around that time, we had an old tile setter. He had been the tile setter in our county since the end of World War II. When he got out of the, he was in the Navy also. He went right in, into being a tile setter. And so this is about 1984, around the same time you're talking about. Yeah. And he approached me and he said, I'm getting too old for this. I heard from your dad, you like tile. So he basically said, I'm going to send everybody your way. This guy, he, he helped me go from zero to 60. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. In a short time, because he said, do this, do that. Yeah. 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 You know, old setters or old cross people didn't want to share what they knew well he he was retiring yeah i know but that's but that's that's still funny because a lot is of times they just are like you know <laughs> this is a secret you know what i mean and they didn't want to share it so but you you know you got you got lucky, i guess really in a sense i guess i got lucky then you yeah. know he he was this i mean i'm only five foot four you know i'm not that tall sal and um but this guy's name was ray he was shorter than me and he was mean uh, he throw pieces of tile at his helper every every day we'd see his helper leave at noon because they got <laughs> he couldn't fight take anymore <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be back the next morning and they'd go through it again and ray wanted to talk to me and i thought is he gonna throw something at me <laughs> <laughs> but he was really he was really kind and you know he liked he and my dad were from the same school you yeah. know they they lived through the depression and they were yeah. they were buddies they yeah. they admired each other so uh, Ray took me under his wing and taught me everything that he knew. When I first started, um, condos, mm. condos, four and a quarter tile, right? Oh, yeah. It was just endless, endless. Like, was, I think, like, we did a couple of projects. One was like 400 units, another one was like, I don't know, 300 100 units. And that's where I, I learned very first tile, right? Mm. So, Mastic, yeah. Plywood subfloor, yeah. With plywood um, underlayment, mm -hmm. uh, eight by eight tiles or six by six tiles on the floor, four and a quarter. 
by the time I would, you just one after another, after another, after another, after another, just repetition, repetition, repetition. By the time I was done with, um, with doing those, right. I, I would go in, I would do, I would do like four complete bathrooms, like five foot above the shower and four feet around. I do like five of them. Right. In one day. I have a similar story. Um, the days in, you know, those hotels. Yeah. Okay. So there was one being built here in Plattsburgh and I, I got to think it was probably around 1985 ish. And, uh, my dad got the, um, the job to do all the tile. And so basically what it was, Sal was tubs. And so, like you said, five feet up three walls. And then, um, so it was my brother, my father and I that would do the tile. So my dad was a hard worker. He would do six a day. Okay. That's not grouted. Of course. It's like yeah. what you were saying. Yeah. He would set six a day. My older brother would do five and I'll never forget this. Cause I couldn't catch up to those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to the point I could do you four. A day. <laughs> yeah. You know, Sal, I never said I was fast. <laughs> Well, so, that's not important, right? That's not important. So, oh, you know, you know what I always say too, right? <laughs> people won't remember how fast you did it, but they, every day they'll see how well you did it. What we would do is you mix up your grout, you use your Teflon rubber float, just like you normally do. And then you'd wait maybe five, 10 minutes and you'd take powder out of the bag and sprinkle it onto the, the floor. Yeah. And then you would sprinkle sawdust and then use a burlap bag with the flat of your palm. And I, I never did that with, um, with uh, regular tile, but we did that with quarry tile. Well, that's, yeah, we did quarry and we did the mosaics. And the one thing cool about that, Sal, was that the grout would dry very quickly, number one. Yeah. Number two, it was right to the surface. Yeah, it was, it was flat even. It was completely like, like yeah right up to the to the edge of the tile yeah you know i tried to do that method years later with a modified grout oh what a mess <laughs> it doesn't work that well I no am. no yeah. in fact in fact that was that was one of those situations where i i'm admitting that i made a mistake <laughs> because <laughs> oh, because the, you never have made any, any other mistake besides <laughs> that one right <laughs> years ago like a lot of a lot of a lot of tub areas right mm -hmm. were done on drywall because it was like uh, America Orleans, um, Florida, Florida tile had the Florida four, and four and three eighths. And then there was another one, I think it was Mannington at the time was four and three eighths. Okay. And then there was American Orleans, the United States ceramics. Oh yeah. U.S. That, ceramics. Um, yeah. There was a bunch of different companies, right? I had like sample boards. I go in with the sample board. So it's this tile here. Right. And 90% of the time you could get an exact match. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so you take out like three feet around. Yeah. Right. And you know, try and find like a, a solid spot in the in, in the drywall. You take three, put in some backer board, some cement board, and then retile. And by the time you were done, it would look like it had never been touched. Right. I, I must have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those. Yeah. Back then, everything you did, right, wasn't exactly up to par because you know you didn't have the knowledge you have now. I've been doing tile for 35 years, been sewing right. tile for 35 right. years. So, you know. 10 years in, even 15 years in, you didn't, you know, you had the experience, you had the, the knowledge of how, how you did it and it worked, right. but mm -hmm. you didn't know it's because information was hard to come by. You didn't have all everything you needed to know. So today yeah. there's, like we said earlier, there's certain things that I did back then that I, you know, I cringe at when I think about it. And I think one of the first videos was, you know, just, combing thin set and rolling out the Ditra, you know, yeah, I actually, I, I remember those videos and you have a nickname, but I'm not going to say this. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Every, yeah, everybody, everyone that sees you calls you Hollywood. Right. Right. I don't mind the nickname. You could be called worse. Couldn't you Sal? You know, but how did you get into the, uh, the video world? So it was by mistake back in 2006 or 2007. Well, that's not that long ago then. Yeah, well. I mean, 13, 14 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's right at the beginning of YouTube. Oh, okay, okay. Because before that, I think YouTube started in about 2006 or 2000, See, 2006. 
So <laughs> I was like, well, let me just shoot some video, all right? And then I'll upload it to YouTube and then embed the video into my website. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. I just, just did a bunch of videos. Had n n the, the intention was never to do a YouTube video. The intention mm -hmm. was upload the, because that was the easiest way to do it. Just upload the video and then embed it in the website. So you go through my website and then you see, you, see, you know, click on a video and you see some of my work and stuff like that. And then one day, probably about, five, six, six years ago, I said, why don't I make a how-to video? And that's where it all started. There's one video in particular where I reference the, NT, uh, the TCNA handbook, right? And, and I show that and I, I reference it, right? And I still get a ton of people say, that's not how you do it. You just have to show up and shoot. Yeah, pretty much. And then, the editing and then the encoding and then the uploading and that, that's all none of your your problem. Right. Yeah. But that's then you good. always have those trolls and those those people that know better than me, which yeah. there are plenty of people that know better than me, but they know better than the manufacturer. They both know better than the TCNA. They know better than everyone out there. They are the ultimate authority in how to do things. Right? Yeah, know, Even though they never set a tile. Uh, Sal, the only thing I did was tile. And so the other guys that would do carpet, vinyl, or hardwood would come in after me. And chip your tile. Oh, yeah. Especially, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I don't want to insult carpet installers, but we had guys up here oh, that like, yeah. like to chip my tile. So yeah. the, the that, metal that, edge. That, 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 not yeah. that cop. <laughs> yeah. So they're know. tucking in their carpet and a hammer blow misses their whatever. So you guys were the first with like an uncoupling mat. You guys were the first with a bonding flange, right? A lot of people have been copying that stuff. Yeah, and and that's that's okay because it's I think okay, but you know, but you know, but the thing, the more important thing, right? If they're copying it, right? Why? Yeah. Because it's something that works. Mm -hmm. Before we had uncoupling membranes, a lot of a lot of times you use like the plywood, like, and you know what we talked about. But then uh, what about backer board? Mm -hmm. So, um, and a lot of people today, right? They get the backer board and they just put it down and screw it down and nail it down without putting the thin set under it. And, oh, yeah. and yeah. That's, that can be a huge problem. Mm -hmm. You know, and stuff that you haven't thought about in a long time. And some of it is stuff that you really don't want to think about because... <laughs> You're embarrassed to admit that you actually did it. Not because you you knew it was wrong, right? right, it, right. It's because that's how it was done. Even today, Sal, when I, you know, if I'm doing a workshop, attendees, uh, you know, will come up and show me pictures of showers that they're redoing for somebody. And you try and uh, hide your your horrified look. Well, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we we even show some images too. Yeah. Yeah. And I always am the optimist to believe that no one did that on purpose. <laughs> so what was the point I was trying to make? Um, well, information. Oh, information, right? So where did you get the information from? Like I said, libraries, you, you know, you talk to some other guy, oh. if you knew a tile guy, and then how many tile guys did you really know? But the information was not easy to come by. Like I, I would, I have TCNA handbooks that go back to 1992. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I would order those not every year, but you know, every other year or whatever, I would order those. So, and there's only so much information. I know it's, it's there, but there's only, only so much information that you can get from that too. Right. Oh yeah. And, and then, then the ANSI, like, you know, I have, I have an ANSI book here, you know what I mean? And you know, the TCNA handbook. So that, that was only really the only source of information you could get. And, but today, you got workshops, you've got uh, the internet, you've got the, if you want to know how to do something, you can find it. No problem. Yeah. So really there is no excuse today for not knowing how to do something or not, or not having the correct information. Whereas back when we, we were starting, you went on how you did it, how you were taught or, or how you thought it was done today. You, you can find any product that you get, you can either find a video on it 
from the manufacturer. You can find someone that's done a video, like, you know, I'll do a lot of, a lot of videos like that. Or mm -hmm. you can call your rep, or you can even go to a training, training seminar or a training workshop. There's no excuse to not to know how to use something. I agree with you. And I think that is it. That's the sin is if somebody does something when there's all these options of knowing how to do it. Yeah, to find out. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. and, and, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, manufacturers videos, which, and your videos, there's, um, uh, you know, the reps themselves, right? Yeah. There, there's usually an 800 number to the factories. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like Tim, I'll call Tim. Like sometimes I have a question that I know the answer to, right? But I'm like, you know, not a hundred percent sure. I'll call, I'll call Tim, right? I'll say, you know, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. He says, yeah, no, that's right. Or you might want to do this or whatever. So now I'm not like guessing. Mm -hmm. I, I know. And so, and then sometimes it's something will change too. Yeah. I might, you know, I, you know, when, when this video is done, I might actually link to that video in, in the cards or you know what the cards are, right? The little information tabs. Uh, and I might link to that. Okay. Okay. You just like, poof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got me beat on the whole <laughs> internet, yeah. YouTube. Well, technology. the people watching this video, right, will know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I know. You got a smart audience. <laughs> like in this, no, wait a minute. In this corner here. <laughs> right. Pointing yeah. to it. You know, but our industry is not that big. It's pretty cool. A lot of great people, talented people. And um, we still have some really thick headed people that. Uh, <laughs> wow. Well, hey, that's going to happen, right? <laughs> people just. Don't want to, no matter what it is, right? That they, they know one way and that's how they're going to do it, right? Remember the lug back wall oh, tops? <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do with those things. <laughs> Put no mastic on it. <laughs> I, I hated those things. It's like, do I just touch the, the you know, yeah, the, I know. the high I know. points or, or what? Yeah, deeper trowel, right? More mastic. <laughs> well, that depends if the store gave you enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. And one of the things that always stuck with me is he said, it doesn't matter if you live in Australia or Brazil or Italy, Germany, uh, Canada, the same tile setting challenges are the, it's the same, no matter where you live. So uh, don't forget to check, check the description for uh, relevant links and uh, I'll also link the Schluter channel in, in the description. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Sal. Okay, take it easy. You too, bye-bye.